Welcome back to day two of the Monaco Yacht Show and we are about to go on board this vessel, the 43 meter super yacht Silver Wind. So should we let's let's head upstairs so we miss out these guys. Okay. That way you can right. Yeah, you get to see that this this is obviously an open type speedboat. It is a speedboat because you know we, the max I've ever done is 30 knots, so it's quite a fast boat. 30 knots? Wow. Yeah. That's at uh, two two thousand liters of fuel an hour. Uh -huh. <laughs> Deck. What's the name of the deck? Flybridge. Sunbase. Flybridge. Sun, yeah. So you can actually pilot the vessel from here? Yeah, there's just a... My, my, when I park the boat coming and leaving ports, I always drive from here. Just because I have a bit more visual um, sensation. Because obviously you can imagine down there, you're pretty oh, right, closed yeah, off. Yeah. That's the actual bridge. And this is just like a pilot station. So you pop it out here and you can... And then oh, you get it. Uh -huh. Yeah, because if you come up here, you can actually see that this is where you can drive. Right. And then you can see you've got a much oh, better yeah. view. Wow. Yeah which really does help. So the, I think the great thing about this yacht is the sort of enormity of this space. You can have somebody in a jacuzzi, somebody relaxing there, somebody having some breakfast, somebody sunbathing. So it just creates this great large area. Right. And the thing is, you know, this is a Mediterranean boat, fast boat. It's designed for sunbathing and being outside. A lot of guests love it. So I'd say this is where they mostly spend 80% of their time. Okay. Yeah. And there's some shade as well. Yeah, so the shade's nice. You gotta have the shade, right? Yeah, and then you can go straight down into the bridge there. Go down the stairs, you'll have a... So this is a full, full actor system, so no paper charts at all. Okay. It's cool, which is it? It's a very, very small bridge, isn't it? That's yeah. Nice. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, um, we restricted 60 miles offshore type of yacht. It's a fast yacht. It's not, it's not, you know, you're not doing trans transatlantic crossings. Right. You know, we're nipping down the San Jose and going to Portofino type thing. So it's much more of a. Right, of course. Can you just talk me through the controls? Yeah. So here we have our radar on the left, but you can. Ch all screens are interchangeable, so you could have the radar over here if you prefer, radar in the center. Mm -hmm. These are our camera jet system. Okay. That's what the boat drives the boat, so it doesn't have props. It's actually got two jets, and they're like a water pump, which suck water from the underneath and blow it out the back. Right. Okay. Which, which creates a really, it's a very smooth operation compared to standard props, which are very noisy and vibration. This vibration. is very smooth. Yeah. So, you know, when you're doing 20 knots, you're just floating. Very cool. Okay. So what, what, what other controls do we have here? So we've got the thrusters and joystick. Yeah, about, you have your bow thruster. These control each individual jet, so each jet actually moves by itself. You can, which is great for maneuvering because you have much more versatility. That's our Ectus, our camera system, so we can see what's happening. Renew that leather. <laughs> <laughs> That's not looking so good. But well, it's eight years old, it's not bad. Eight year old boat, yeah, 2014. It's an Italian built, right? Yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah. ISA. ISA, correct, so yeah. What does that stand for exactly? I'm not 100% sure. I found Either. Italian Luxor Super Yacht. The thing is, they, they got bought out by Palumbo, and I think oh. Palumbo might be changing the branding on that because okay. obviously, Palumbo is a commercial shipyard from Naples, and he's bought like two or three shipyards, okay. three shipyards, one in Marseille, one in uh, Mondo Marine, Savona, and then he's obviously bought Isa. Okay, mm. I just noticed the, uh, the book, the, yeah. the Stella Yachting. Yeah. I have an advert in that book. Good. My channel. <laughs> <laughs> My first paper advert. Mm. 
So then straight away we come into the guest area. This is, this is also very handy on a, this type of yacht to have your day head. Right. Because I've been on a lot of boats, this type of fast boat where they don't have a day head. So then you have all the guests going to cabins, going which to is not cabin. nice. So then we come up on the bow. So this is sort of like the people come up here and have a little peak quiet time, sunbathing, relaxing. It's got the date on it, 2014. All right. And then I'll just open up these so you get a feel for it. Yeah, I think when they're fully open, it gives you much bigger feeling of space, which is, it's a nice feature of this vessel is just this huge sort of flow through area. We can have the kids up here watching a film, somebody sitting there reading a newspaper, somebody having some breakfast, right. and then sunbathing out there. And that's a real nice feature about this yacht. Uh, yacht. There's not a restriction, because a lot of these boats, you sort of get there and you've got a big door, and then it cuts the feeling. Right. But again, I think that this style of yacht, if you're chartering a yacht like this, you need to understand what you're chartering, because if you use it how it's designed, it's amazing. Right. You know, if you want to go sort of off-road driving, like, you know, I always say it's like having a Ferrari. You know, when it's a beautiful day, drop the top, beautiful roads, off you go. Right. Rainy day and really wavy, you wouldn't do four-wheel drive in a Ferrari, would you? Right, and right. this is what it is, this is a Ferrari of boats and it's, <laughs> it's spectacular. But 30 knots, uh, yeah. I agree. But one of the things I always, uh, I always uh, admire when I, look, when I come on a boat, mm. is just the sheer quality of everything, you know? I mean, it sounds crazy, but yeah. just the door, like the, the, the... Oh, the whole construction is, yeah. It's just amazing, the piece of engineering. I think that's, that's the wonderful thing about yachts is because there's so much money involved and everything's possible. Right. But I bet this door's bespoke though. It has to be, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, for sure. Because so. um, they, they've, this is the one, ESA 140, they've made ESA 120, they've made like, I think, eight of them. And this is the only one they made of the 140. Okay. And if you ever get a chance to go on an ESA 120, You'll, you'll feel the difference is huge. It just feels sort of pokey. Oh, really? Mm. Mm -hmm. And you come straight into the master. Carpets are amazing. Yeah, and then you come in here, you have sort of the vanity area, and then it goes down into the You have your shower there and your toilet and bidet here. Can I just open that? Yeah, of course. Open it uh, yes. So we got a shower. Oops. Rainforest shower head, love it. Down lights in there as well. Look at the quality of it, everything. Fantastic. Oops, is that a uh, Lutron lighting? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Lutron is pretty much industry standard. Yeah, well, the great thing is you can sort of program it how you want. Just a big TV here. And normally they're hidden. Mm. It's unusual to see one that's just mounted on the wall like that. Yeah, well, for the light effect on the leather on the back, it gives it a nice uh, effect. I see. Then here we go down to the guest area, another four cabins. I'm just being very careful, mm. not banging my bag. Yes, we don't want to bang our Hermes silk panels. Oh. Yeah, it's funny, we had to replace some of them and um, you call up Hermes and they're like, who are you? They won't just sell it to you. You have to tell them the designer and the shipyard and, oh, wow. and they make an exception. That's pretty terrible. Yeah. <laughs> take your money, depending on some things. So here we come straight into the VIP. Oh, 
Wow. And the VIP has a little changing room as well, a little walk-in wardrobe. Space, isn't it? Mm, yeah, it's very interesting. I think the fun, the fun one is if you go in like uh, Mangusta yachts, and they've obviously made, you know, that's number 14, 165, there's 14 other them, and you see what people have done with their choices, and it's quite interesting. That's okay. good, yeah. What room is this? Is, uh, this is the twin, twin. Ha has a Pullman here, oh, okay. and these two beds can go together to make a very large double. All right. This used to be a spa with a staircase going up to the master. But obviously, for charter, it's much better to have an extra cabin than right. a spa, so we'll change it into a cabin. And we, we, all these cabins are named by the color of the marble in the bathroom, so this is the green cabin. Yeah, they all have different theme on the marble. Yeah, well, this uh, type of mosaic is actually, they design it in-house, and then they bring it here in panels and install it. Wow. Because obviously, trying to get that fading of colors, it's much easier when you have a studio and you have a big area and you can set it up design the space, make it in panels and bring it in and put it in. Right. Yeah, it's very interesting. Because I'll... Quick question. Mm. You were saying before I was talking about yourself. Yeah. This is, how long have you been in, at sea? Ooh, um, I got my yacht master in 1999 in the UK, say. Okay. Yeah. There was a, a sort of thing on one of the comments on one of my videos was saying mm. about people who work at sea look aged. Yeah. And you just said you're 49 years old. I'll be 50. And you do 50. not look 49 <laughs> I'll be, years old. <laughs> I'll be 50 in six months' time. Well, there you yeah. go. So, that, that is a direct response to that comment that people who work on yachts, don't, uh, they, they weather and age badly. Well, you do have to keep out the sun. That's true. 100%. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Well, yeah. So what, 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 what colour would you say that is? We call this the grey cabin, just for really easy. Okay. And if you look in the shower, the mosaic's beautiful. It's very well done. Building yachts is uh, quite stressful, but a lot of fun. Right. Okay. Just remember you're wearing a mic, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so while we're left alone here, I'll just show you some features in here. So we've got the iPad. That's not somebody's iPad that they left. That is for controlling of the AV systems. You can see here, obviously, uh, light. Behind there is this uh, light switch, the Lutron panel light switch. Power socket. I know that sounds funny to point out, but the amount of super yachts that don't have visible power sockets. And then people are forever trying to figure out where to plug in power. And it drives people nuts. I was just I was just saying while you're away that I was just pointing some of the details out in the room and I was saying that one of the things that is sounds odd that I'm pointing out mm. is there a power socket, a visible power socket on the table here. Mm. And on the amount of yachts I've been on where there's no power sockets anywhere. Mm. And then when people come on, they're like, where do I charge my phone? And there's, and then we have to sort of run cables <laughs> out of cupboards and stuff, you know, because they've hidden uh, all of the mm -mm. all of the power. These lamps as well, they're weird. They look, almost look like an empty bottle of cognac. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's even got some cognac in it. <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> Yeah. So is that, oh, there's a TV there. So there's yeah. a TV on the wall there. I mean, the thing with TVs, which is very interesting, is people rarely watch TV. I think the biggest one for TVs is kids. Right. But otherwise... Uh, right, on the charter boat. Yeah, I, I mean... Imagine the last thing someone wants to do no. is watch television. Right? Yeah, the, you know, the kids will want to watch a bit maybe, but then we, tr we try and get the kids out there and, you know, see Bob and... Then, Drag right. them around jet skis and put them on donuts. Get them tired as possible so they sleep well. Right, right. <laughs> also keeps the parents happy. Nice. There you have a designated crew member that uh, goes sea bobbing with the kids. Yeah, well, we have our first mate, Tristan. He's very sporty. And then we have Georgie from the Isle of Wight, and she's also sporty. So, oh, right. yeah. I must think that's a hard job. <laughs> sea bobbing. Well, the, the problem is, is if you've got too many kids and you're out there for seven hours in the sun, it's not nice, mate. Yeah, it's quite tiring. Yeah, it was fun trying to center this lamp. This is a new lamp we put in a couple of years ago. 
trying to find the center point. <laughs> Where is the center point? I mean, in the end, we had to go for that center little sort of flying spaceship. And then we had the problem that a slight corner overlapped on the circle, so we had to remake the whole circle. We actually remade the whole ceiling to get it proper. Wow. Because it mustn't overlap, of course, to give right, the feeling right. of floating, yeah. Right. And, and that, is there a purpose behind that, or is it just art? It's just, it's, it's art, yeah. But it has a nice effect if you, definitely gives it a nice sort of melted metal feel. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love it. Now, now that you said melted metal, I'm thinking of uh, Terminator. Terminator, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I did a, a few years ago, I did a, uh, I talked to one of the exhibitors and he had a table and it cost 400. Oh what, the, the twisting one and closing in and out, that no, one? it was just a long table. Didn't have, didn't do anything. Have you um, seen that one which twists in and twists out? No. Amazing. Is it here? No, I've seen it only on uh, Facebook. Somebody put it up on Facebook. Oh, right. The whole it's twisting table. $450,000 And I was just, I, I mean, what, it's, when this is... dropping 500 million on your Well, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the way I, I said it in the video, but I mean, when you look at, the, it's, it's very hard to get across on camera the, the quality of everything, yeah. the floor, the, the way the floor is constructed, it sounds like a weird thing to point out, but the way it's constructed here with the metal around the edge there and... Yeah, fun thing we have here as well, we have the, the jet skis, like in the bat wings. Oh yeah, just, and the little booties on the, on the chairs so they don't scratch the wood. And the quality and the thickness of that table is incredible. It sounds funny to mention it, but it's just everything like this when you on a yacht. Everything is at the absolute best quality everywhere. And you hear what he said about how long it took them to get that sense of things that we wouldn't normal people don't think about so much. This vessel is just for charter or for sale as well? For sale as well. For sale as yeah. Well. Okay. So can you tell me the price of charter? Uh, charter high seasons is 195,000 a week and low seasons 165. Okay. You still so have, you that's have to, euros. Yeah. Okay. You still have to have VAT on that, depending where you start the charter. And can you tell me? Mm. This is a question I get an awful lot on my channel. Is when I if I come to you and I say I want to charter the vessel, so mm. like I pay you 195,000 euros. Yeah. What does that include, and what doesn't it include? Um, it only includes hire of the vessel. Doesn't include fuel, berthing, food, VAT, anything like that. Right. Yeah. So that's just that's just. Okay, I've secured the boat for a week. Mm, mm. Now you need to pay for everything else. Correct. And, and can and you tell me? I mean, it, I think a good example just to understand it's like here in Monaco is about 680 euros a night for berthing. Right. And you get to Ibiza, it's 5,000 euros a night. Wow. So the difference is astronomical, yeah. So I paid you the 195. Yeah. I've had my charter. I'm leaving the boat. How much have I spent? Well, well think about in Italy, it's 22% VAT on top of that which goes directly to the Italian government. Okay. Then, there's, then there's the fuel. Uh, luckily in Italy, we can still get duty-free fuel, so we're paying about 65 cents a litre compared to 150 here in France. Wow. Huge difference on a, right. a boat which uses a lot of fuel. Um, as I said, berthing, it ranges from 600 Monaco, 1,400 Central Pay to 5,000 Ibiza. So it's a huge variation. Okay, but if I, if I take the boat and I say, right, I want to go to Capri mm. for, for a week, and I just want to sit there at anchor mm. and do some swimming, diving or whatever well Cap capri is 440 miles from monaco so it's quite far so you'd be looking at probably to get there 16,000 euros in fuel each way so okay. 36 on top and the problem is depending on how you charter the vessel there's often a re-delivery fee right because obviously you've got, yeah. you got to come back to where you start from. yeah so but even I'm, if i leave in capri i, gotta pay I mean the thing is if, if you give us enough notice in advance we try and work it in with another charter and to cut the cost down but it's you know last minute is always an issue okay, okay. <laughs> obviously on top of fuel we've got um the food as well food, yeah. and drink so yeah what I mean, uh, kind of menu do we have on board the thing here? is for, for me what i always find is all the years i've been yachting all the chefs i work with I, I insist there is no menu because for me you come on a yacht it's up to you what you feel like eating it's not what oh, somebody nice. presents you nice. and if you don't have an idea the chef can construct something for you but you know, we try and get everything fresh from the market so if she's got a wild sea bass which is just from the market you can see the eyes are super fresh then you'll try and sell that to the client right and then right. also as well as once we get the clients on board the first day is the most telling day from there the chef has 
every single menu from every single client we've ever done in the last seven years written down day by day what they eat right. so you construct a whole plan and that's what we then pass on to the brokers so the brokers can deal when they go to a new york how the client wants to eat and what they like so so, so do you do, do you get in advance an idea of what they're going to eat because you've got a provision for that for that biggest problem about those uh, sort of preference lists is it's often just one of the clients filling it in I and see. it's not catering for the other seven people so you use that as a guideline Right. And then the rest you just construct once you've got the, the chef, you know, once the clients on board the first day decides how we're going to run the whole thing with them. Because, uh, yeah, as I said, sadly, most preference lists are written by one person. <laughs> so you can understand the, the level of sort of stress. I mean, the great thing about chartering the Mediterranean, you can get all kind of supplies everywhere. And you, as after years of doing it, you build up all your contacts and you can always cater for it. So it's good. So what about, um, like, Obviously, this, this is different mm. for every. I understand yeah. that every charter is different, uh, but so you're going to have um, a massive supply of alcohol on board as well, I would imagine, because you've got to again. You yeah, don't know I mean, what they're going to ask for. The thing is, what what we do is um, obviously a preference list. They say what they'd like. Okay. We have a boat stock on board, which we can tap into and then restock, and that's you just you just run it like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so. I, mean, I would imagine people will ask for things like, I'd like a cognac. They won't specifically ask for, yeah. uh, like, this particular so cognac. I, I, how I run it to kind of keep it fair on everybody, it's like, you know, the dry stores. The chef has bought in flour two weeks ago. You didn't pay for the flour. Right. But she'll buy something to top up some of the other dry stores, and that it just sort of keeps the flow going. And then, with the, you know, if you ask for a cognac, and you took a cognac from board and you had one the whole week charter, we wouldn't charge you for that. Right, but if right. you're having two or three a day, you'd have to replace the bottle. So it's just right. sort of a, a right. fair spread system. Okay, you know? okay. So other, otherwise, it's impossible to stock everything. No, and, I, and that's what, that, that was, <laughs> you know, yeah, hence If you're buying question, sugar yeah. every time for each client, you're gonna end up with 100 kilos of sugar on board. So <laughs> right. it's kind of, a, and there's no space for storing, obviously. Right, so that's, a, that's yeah. another issue with uh, a, a vessel, any vessel, even, a, even people think that, 140 meter vessels got you know endless storage but they don't they're, no. they're all because they're more the bigger the boat the yeah. more stuff they've got exactly yeah right so yeah, the bigger the salary the more you spend <laughs> <laughs> smaller the salary less you spend <laughs> okay all right well thanks very much anyway Pleasure. thank you